Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. Very excited to be still at COFES, the Congress on the Future of Engineering Software for our second annual partnership with them. We are now with John Lasovic. Hello. Hello, oh, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on to the show, really appreciate it. Wonderful being here. Very excited to talk about you, talk about Upchain. John's background's crazy, 25 years of engineering data management, two and a half years now as the CEO and founder of Upchain, which is doing cloud PLM, product lifecycle management, integrating product data up and down the value chain, driving collaboration, innovation, and growth. So now let's talk about your journey getting into engineering software. How did it even pique your interest and in you get involved? Well, I, I graduated with a dual degree, one in, uh, in mechanical engineering and one in, in computer science. And my first jobs were doing engineering work uh, at, at a couple of companies. And through that and linking the, the computer science part of it, I ended up doing automation and helping the companies be more productive in their work. From that, um, I ended up running uh, uh, multinationals uh, engineering data requirements and integrating them globally as they were, they were scaling up and growing through acquisitions. Um, that led to me being hired by Siemens and running their um, uh, consulting services practice for North American Aerospace. And got into the, into the field that way, not really a, a, a conscious decision, but it just, uh, as typically things happen, I think, in, in life, one small decision led to another and, and here I am. Yeah, so so tell us about like the initial times when you're seeing this globally become a big deal with data and manufacturing processes and design and engineering. How did how did you first see this evolving and you getting more and more involved with with making processes more effective? Well, it, it's really started with the the capabilities on the engineering side and and the abilities to do engineering uh, on a global front to the necessity of it as as the supply chain has proliferated around the world and and yeah. uh, opening up economies. So it first started with manufacturing and manufacturing being distributed around the world, and and the requirement for uh, if you're manufacturing, you need the product details. What am I making, right? And that. Uh, led into the next step where the, the supply chain became a lot more uh, effective and, and, and started doing um, its capabilities grew. So now you have companies out there that, um, smaller companies, but they, they have some very good expertise in products that they bring to market that are absorbed by others. And you've got this whole value network uh, of companies that need to work together to bring, bring a product to market. Like a, a prime example is Apple. Yeah. Where would Apple be without its supply chain, right? Not only in terms of manufacturing, which is a core key, but if you look at it, uh, Apple does a lot of systems integrations. They find key new technologies and they absorb it into their product by, by collaborating and partnering with the people that actually invented this, the, the, the products. Yeah, so a big part of the awakening to the importance of, of the engineering and design process was the globalized movement. Correct. So globalization and supply chain and engineers and developers and designers from around the world have to now collaborate in a very seamless product life Correct. cycle management. And, and yes. all that's been enabled, not just because the products are getting more complicated, but there's there's a revolution going on in the world uh, in terms of the complexity, the ability to manufacture, the scale of things that are going on, right? So in certain regions, you can't do something else and, and other regions are much better for it. Originally manufacturing in China, for instance, like they could scale very quickly and be, bring people on board. Mm -hmm. All of this was enabled by technology, right? And, and the computer systems being able to manage that data and allow for data to be to be um, um, shared. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, then how did the idea of Upchain come to be? Was it the you seeing all of what you're describing now and saying I want to build the best solution to this? So the idea really is is a slight slight twist to what's going on typically uh, in, in terms of PLM software. So we're we're meant to be an agile PLM infrastructure for collaborating across the board in an agile fashion. So what, what I saw when I was out there, there's the democratization of the data and ability to work uh, in it was being held back by the technology. The current PLM systems that are out there are very good uh, and have been designed and used by large corporations who can go in there, implement very expensive software, customize the hell out of it mm -hmm. to fit their business processes, and then also go in there and homogenize the data. The supply chain downstream does not have those resources, number one, and number two, does not have the ability to standardize and, and direct uh, what CAD systems they use, what metadata, what workflows, that's all being driven by the, uh, their customers at the top, right? So they need to be able to manage data, workflows, people in a, in a very agile fashion mm -hmm. through heterogeneous data. 
Mm. right? And so there is, isn't a solution out there that can handle he heterogeneous data, uh, multi-CAD, multi-workflows, be able to put a bill of material together with subsets being, being developed, by, developed and manufactured um, by different companies that don't have the same standards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That niche mm -hmm. on heterogeneous data, being able to manage it agilely, uh, um, collaborate in real time and be able to onboard and offboard people as you need it is what Upchain is all about. So we do not go in and we do not sell, for instance, to the OEMs as their prime uh, system of record for, for uh, PLM data. We're complementary to it. So if you've got a General Motors and we've got customers like this that are down the supply chain, we are the link or, or, or the babble fish of engineering data to be go up and down the supply chain. Mm. And when we go all the way up, they typically have a very ingrained PLM systems that we're complementary to, mm -hmm. and we integrate mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet downstream, where they cannot afford those monolithic enterprise uh, systems, that's our niche to be the system of record for them down, downstream. Upstream, the system of record are, are the, the big uh, PLM systems. Okay, okay. So the, the words I think that are really important here, you're on the agile, and then you're also heterogeneous data, so to be able to communicate across all parts of the of the PLM across from the upstream to the downstream. Yep. And the upstream meaning the... The, the companies that actually sell to... to the customer side. Yeah. That, and then the downstream meaning the designers and engineers. Oh, so so up, upstream meaning the companies that actually take the product to market. Apple, for instance, yes. is at the top of the food chain. Okay. okay. At the bottom of the food chain are small companies that might be working on, I don't know, the keyboard, for instance. Oh, oh, Right? Okay. So that's the supply that's chain. That's a downstream. Yes. Okay. okay. So uh, okay. Apple outsources the keyboard to be done by um, third party X. Okay. The keyboard company needs the little plastic springs and they found a company that's really good at it. They outsource to somebody else and, it, and it's trickle down effect uh, through that value network of, of, of the products involved in creating the com uh, the commercial product has a whole bunch of products, sub products, and subsystems in it that need to be collaborated on and integrated to. Yes, and then how? And then the, the um, upchain would then uh, enable the ones that are putting together the keyboard at the very um, the the lowest parts of the chain to to have the data uh, heterogeneously be able to flow where everyone kind of understands it all the way up to selling it to the customer. Correct. Okay. Okay. Now. What what is what is the the heterogeneity of the data? How do you do that process? So we've built a, a, a an application with some with some technologies in it that is allows you to easily translate data and and flip over the the matrix of what the data looks like and present it in a for in the format uh, um, and and user interface that the consumer is comfortable with and that's what they work in. For instance, we have integrations so you know somebody might. Um, the bill of material, for instance, for one organization is different than another one, right? We have we have a deep integration, for instance, to Excel, so we can expose our bill of material not on the database through an interface or through the CAD integrations, right, directly to Excel, and allow people to work in Excel like they're used to. Yet it's it's fully integrated through the whole design process. On the other end, we've got deep integrations to CAD that the bill of material is built through the CAD integrations, and all the way up and down that, and and being able to to allow the system to be used in an agile fashion non-disruptive allows us to be able to integrate all these different players very rapidly and onboard them. So part of the problem here is that there's resources, there's not enough engineering resources in the world, right? So people are trying to find resources and technologies and be able to integrate that to help them uh, get the product to market. And, and in doing that, they're looking around and finding resources, but the problem is how quickly can you onboard them and have them be uh, productive in helping you uh, create your product? And that's our vision, that it's streamli streamlined way of doing that and being able to integrate this network of people, resources, manufacturing, service down the supply chain um, as quickly as possible. And the only way to do that is to be non-disruptive and to be agile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then w the examples of, of, of the application of, of Upchain's Cloud PLM is a company like Apple is an example. Um, there, are, there are other industry examples that you can share with us that can uh, uh, illustrate out the the uh, the lowest parts of the of the um, what was it called the high and the low the up the, the end of the start the, and the, the start and the end the, the OEM the original equipment manufacturers down to the base uh, okay, single component uh, that's uh, how it goes companies. Okay, the OEM from the from the the the, the, the finals 
and then the the bases to the ones that are that are doing the components interesting so then give us more of these industry examples of of up chain in different industry so we've we've got the um, the Apple for example, electronic side you've got the automotive side as well where you've got a, a, a very uh, mature supply chain uh, however the engineering aspects are getting uh, more and more pushed down so you've got companies that are going in there well, uh, we've got companies like Magna, for instance, that do a whole subset of systems. They actually do even the manufacturing is outsourced by the OEMs to them. So they integrate very heavily. They've got a very uh, deep supply chain that's providing them uh, value in, in products and engineering resources and, and manufacturing resources. We've got companies um, in the food industry, for instance, which you might not think is really PLM related, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but we've got companies in there that want to understand um, the bill of material. For them, a bill of material is a recipe. Mm -hmm. uh, the recipe is different for different regions. In, in Canada, for instance, there are certain rules and laws in, uh, about salt content. Uh, there's also all sorts of different aspects of peanut and, and nuts uh, that you have to manage. And so you have to be able to uh, understand that whole supply chain. And they're providing bits that could be as simple as salt. And you've got issues with salt. We re resolved a problem with one of our customers. But being able to manage that supply chain in developing the product, but also um, um, there's certain regional aspects of doing products. We got one company in Canada that's using our, our product right now, and it, it's all about packaging. And the less cardboard and plastic they use in their packaging, yeah. they actually get incentives back from the government. That's great. Right? And that being, how do you track that? You yeah. track that through PLM, yeah, yeah. right? So it, it goes, it's very broad in what's going on in the world and, and, and integrating all this. And moving forward, we've got customers right now that are trying to integrate and we're working with, they've got Traditionally, it's been very separate, di very different um, disciplines that have been pretty well um, segregated and, 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 and no, they don't work very well together. You've got mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, a lot of discussion at, at COFIS here on, on analysis, CAE, and how that works and, and being able to integrate it, right? Uh, you've got software that needs to be integrated now. So bring mm -hmm. a product to market right now and is really key to have all these different different disciplines working together on the engineering front, but also in manufacturing, service, uh, uh, financials, bring them all together yes. is a key. We are having projects right now where we're integrating, um, and didn't think of this ever in my, historically, when, in all my 25 years in the industry, but linking mechanical, electrical, software, and architecture together. Architecture, right? Yeah. You've, got, you've got different companies that are building, you know, uh, not to get into details, which I can't get into, building buildings or, or architectural things that have mechanical things that go inside, mm -hmm. and the mechanical bit has changed and it's impacted uh, the building, that the building main structure has to be moved and they've poured footings already, already and they don't know what to do now. Mm. And the cost of that and delays of that in the project, but if they were integrated, they could actually understand the links between all these different disciplines in real time, yeah. and it'll manage that, how much of a difference would it make? Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, you know, there's numbers out there that 80% of, of engineering projects are, are uh, over budget and, and, um, uh, oh, and, and have, uh, uh, they're, they're late, mm -hmm. right? So all this is getting worse as we go. Mm -hmm. uh, the product recalls on, on products are accelerating. All this is because of the complexity of what's going on. And, and the more complex it is, the more you need to be able to collaborate in real time throughout that whole value chain. Yeah, yeah. It is the, the numbers of engineering projects that are now happening around the world um, from everything from just software to buildings and architecture and manufacturing and everything in between is just crazy the amount that is happening. So like you said, to be able to cut down on some of the uh, resources that we are we are uh, that that is we're having these oops moments that are costing lots of money, and so to be able to cut to cut down on that and to become more effective uh, at what we're building is very important. Where is future uh, PLM going? You were talking about being agile, heterogeneity of data, being able to very easily see up and down um, um, from the very customer side all the way down to the component side, being able to really communicate. The, the trend that I'm seeing that's going on is you've got, you can see it today, right? You've got companies that have grown very large very quickly with very few resources. You look at companies like Fitbit, for instance, right? When they went to market with the Fitbit watches, I think they had 40 people on it. Like you think about the complexity of that, what they've come to market with, and that's, the, that's because they the ability to be able to integrate all these disparate uh, companies and, and build a network very rapidly to build a product uh, uh, to market. 
I believe I, that that is accelerating. We've got the 3D printing. So I, I think what's going to happen is that, you know, people like us working at, at home will, will, can, will eventually be able to think of a product, design it through all the systems that, that you're seeing here in, in COFES, you know, companies that are doing fabulous things like Onshape, right? Online, you don't need to be an expert anymore, mm -hmm. right, to design a product. Mm -hmm. And then be able to uh, outsource it and get the resources you need as a single person, not even just a small company, and get your idea, uh, maybe not to market, but get an idea out there. Uh, and I, I really think that even get it to market is, is you're, you're seeing that very complicated products are being able to br brought to market with fewer and fewer people. Yeah. If you think about it before, getting a Fitbit watch 20 years ago, what kind of organization would be required to do that? and what was required right now. Similar and to this program that it used to be a multi-million dollar television network. Correct, yeah, exactly, yeah. right? So the de democratization and the ability to scale a very complicated things and, and people are able to do it as, as you know, in teams right now, where before it was whole companies, now you can do it in a small teams. Eventually you, you can do, you'll be able to do it as an individual. And that's, that day is happening, it's coming very quickly, right? Yeah. And so just think about the, the impact of that and all the ideas that people have and the ability for them now to be able to actually see their ideas come to fruition. That, and the key for that is PLM. Yeah, interesting. So when someone gets these creative uh, ideas that they can very quickly uh, rapidly prototype and make sure that the um, the idea that they don't have to do maybe some of the repetitive math and physics right. that and they can... Yeah, yeah and yeah. they might engage someone that knows the physics, right, for a short period, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell them about their project, engage with them very rapidly. So it becomes the nucleus of, of, of all this. It's the center point for all this. And engage with someone, find someone, engage with them, add them to the project, have them add their expertise to it, and, and, and build the product and go to market. This is so interesting, John. We're really excited to see what happens with Upchain down the line and with the future of PLM. And everyone, thank you very much for coming on to the show. Thanks for having me. A great chat. Uh, thank loved you. It. I loved what you're, love what you're doing. It's thank fabulous. You. Thank you. We we're greatly appreciative of that. And, and the more that we can get, like you were explaining, these types of conversations out there, that we can get more of, the, of, of young people figuring out how to get their ideas out into the world, leveraging software technologies. That uh, yeah, and, and that's, so uh, that's my vision. That's what will enable our, you know, we spoke about this a little bit last night at dinner, right? Uh, uh, to the advancement of who we are and what we're doing in the world and, and, with, and, and, and potentially meet all the vast challenges that we have on this planet. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. Unlock that creative potential. I love it. Thank yeah. you, everyone, for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also, go and check out Upchain and John's links. They're all below as well. Check out Kofez's links. Support the artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in. Our links are below as well. And go and build the future. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you soon, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.